Hey guys, so this week in Two Guys and Some Horror, we're watching two films that talk about corn. They have a lot of corn. They're so corny that I think I even made Clark want to shoot his brains out. But we'll find out on this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. We're watching Night of the Scarecrow and Children of the Corn. First, we're going to talk about the bad one, because I really like the way that we're going with that. Bad <laughs> first. That way we can talk about the good and make everyone feel good at the end of the episode. So, huh. um, go ahead. Let me know. What'd you think? Night of the Scarecrow. Night of the Scarecrow? I thought it was your standard B-rated horror movie. Uh, you have you have your hero, you have your heroine, you have the the dad of the heroine who doesn't want her to see the boy, you have your standard sheriff character, you have the two dopish uh, bad boys who are kind of there, okay. just randomly interlaced, and then just a couple random police officers and... A random priest. All you know, everything in here is a trope. This movie is just a series of tropes and orgies. And orgies. So the whole family is involved in this movie, which I thought was really cool. So right. every single character you just labeled there was was family um, or a good friend of the family. Talking about the two boys that are troublemakers. Because um, the, the dad of the girl, the priest, and the cop, the sheriff, they're all family. Right? They're all brothers, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah, they're all related. So I, I couldn't get over the fact that um, I almost wanted to stop watching this movie about 15, 20 minutes in. And I'm yeah. the one who picked it. Um, because I was like, A, this is a really bad copy of the movie that I got. And B, it has nothing exciting about it at all. And then, my friend, and then we get our first kill. I honestly thought that the Scarecrow kills were the most fun for this film. Um I don't know if you feel the same way, but anytime the Scarecrow gave gave in and killed someone, I thought it was awesome. Just felt like he was doing it just to do it. Like at some points, it was it felt like he had a purpose, but other times it was just like, you know, you really didn't have to do that. Yeah, he didn't have to, but he needed to. I I'm defending the Scarecrow in this film for the rest of my life because he was picked on. He was persecuted. If really? anything, this is his revenge. All he was, he, they were starving. They had no food in this shitty little town. And he comes and he gives them life. And then all he asked for was a, a get out of free jail card, right? Get out of jail free card? Just a couple orgies. No, no, no. What those women did were up to them. He didn't make them do anything. Yeah. They liked him. They Very. liked those orgies. There were other men involved. They liked it, those orgies. They liked those orgies. It wasn't his <laughs> fault that the the wives of this town wanted to go out and, and get some from another guy. Um, I, I'm sorry. I really do feel like he did nothing wrong in this movie other than kill people. Well, he was but, using black magic apparently from this book. And then the guy who wanted to kill the Scarecrow guy was like, I'm going to use your magic against you and create an all-powerful evil Scarecrow monster. Which I, he did. He did a good job at that. I just feel it's unfair of the town to be so upset with him when he provided them life. But you can't really defend him killing people based on the sins of the fathers. No, I, I agree. He, he, so where I think he can get away with killing those guys is uh, they kept him trapped and locked and they wanted to put him back. And they wouldn't just give him his book back. If they had given him, look, here's how we end this movie, Okay. The drunk friend is out driving the Zamboni in the field or whatever, whatever that machine's called, the tiller, whatever it is, cracks open the chest that he was in, buried in. Uh, he comes back to life. He's pissed off. He's like, man, I'm screwed. I'm stuck in this scarecrow body or whatever. I need my book back to get back to my regular life. Here's how we end the movie. You give him his freaking book back. They didn't even know where it was until near the end. No, so the dad knew where it was, right? Okay. The dad knew where the book was. I have a note on this too. Because I thought this was funny. The only person in the movie who knows where the book is... Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I have a note, but my wording is way off. Uh, basically, the only person in the, in the movie who knows where the book is... Is the, the, the sheriff who only tells them because uh, he's worried that they're all going to get killed if they don't give the book. So basically, the dad knew. He's dead. Everybody else dies and the only person who's left alive happens to know where the book is hidden it's it's it seems very here you go keep the plot moving forward the well, scarecrow was asking very the, the priest very specifically where is my book 
And the priest knew all of... By the way, this priest was uh, very much against masturbation, but had his own little collage made. You were talking about the magazine? It wasn't a... Ma- well, that was his daughter's know. magazine. How was his daughter's yeah, magazine? Yeah, so his young... So uh, the priest has the younger daughter who's giving eyes to Dylan throughout that whole, like, dinner or whatever, right? Okay. Um, when So when that... Fast way to describe this. Basically, the dad, uh, the priest comes home one night. He tells the wife, "Hey, I'm gonna head over to the, the the church or chapel or whatever to work on my sermon. I'm not feeling too good about it or whatever." When he does that, he's holding that rolled up magazine in his hand, and he goes, uh, "What are you doing tonight, sweetie, or whatever?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm not feeling too good. I'm gonna stay in." And then he he brings her over for a good night kiss, and he goes, "This came in the mail for you, by the way, and I'm not too happy about it." And it's the magazine rolled up. She basically was order, wanting to order Victoria's Secret lingerie, and he caught her getting the magazine in the mail. It looked like a bunch of collages with just a bunch of models on, like, cardboard, cardboard cutout paper. It didn't look like a magazine to me. It looked like he very deliberately made pornography and put it in the magazine. It was a very, it was a very crappy magazine, I will agree. Right. Um, and he was like, oh, Lord, give me the strength to not masturbate. It definitely, he definitely has some issues with yes with uh, his struggles. And the we'll scarecrow say. seduced him, which this is my favorite scene in the whole film. You hear the voice of a lady's laugh. Cannot fornicate in the church. It is wrong. <laughs> that was a very good scene. Um, because then he goes on. He sews the priest's mouth right. shut because he wouldn't tell him where the book was. Speak now or never speak again. <laughs> And he does. I mean, he sells the guy's mouth shut. It was great. It doesn't make sense to me that he let the priest live. Like, maybe he assumed that the priest knew where the book was. But even then, he was just randomly killing people who weren't even involved. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense that the priest died, or didn't die, yet other people do die. Um, Although the Scarecrow is trying to plant his seed in every woman. That was also a very weird uh, bit to the film for me. Like... His finger had a seed on the tip of it, right. and he would shove it down their throat, and then it would grow this weird, like, corn child inside of them, and then they would burst open with these vines, like right. the Evil Dead style. Um, and then, <laughs> that poor girl, she gets taken. But, oh yeah. So, I want to go back to our main characters. So, we have the female and the male. And the female comes to town, and she's already lying. Like, she's lying to everybody. She tells her dad that she invited Dylan, but she hadn't yet. Then she uh, she tells Dylan he was fired, but he wasn't. That was her flirting, but still, another lie. Then she says her dad really liked Dylan, which is totally not true. And then says that her dad invited Dylan to dinner. Like, within the first five minutes of this movie, she's spouting lies, like, left and right. Right. It's a daddy's girl issue. So then we finally get to the family dinner, presumably Thanksgiving. They have a giant turkey. Basically the only reason why I picked this movie. And we find out that all of the... Dylan learns that all of these people are connected, family-wise. Um, and I learn that Uncle Frank, the sheriff, is actually the dude from Dodgeball whose wife doesn't find him to be too sexy. Yes, yes. He's also Bill Dotry and King of the Hill. He's also... Oh, snap. Uh, the guy from Office Space who loses his stapler. Okay. All That's... the same actor. Wait, he... He's oh, also... he is stapler guy. Yes, and he's also in uh, one of these HBO series that has one of the SNL guys in it. I forgot the name of it. Barry. Okay. He's in Barry. He's the... Uh, yeah. He's a, he's a great voice actor. Uh, maybe not the best face for, for movies, but as a sheriff, I don't feel like he felt, filled the role in very well. Well, he also shouldn't have, yeah. um, which I think plays it perfectly because the brother just put him in charge of being a sheriff because he's mayor, and he just wanted someone he can control in power, you know, for a sheriff. Right. So, yeah, he doesn't fit that role at all, which I think actually fits the movie role perfectly. Right. Yeah. Uh, so so we, get, <laughs> we get further down in the film. Um, you know, there's just there's a lot of things to talk about in this movie that we could talk about, but personally, I just I don't think... It's worth talking about. I I feel like this this hits all the standard horror movie points. You have a killer. He says a bunch of weird catchphrases here and there, which they're not not even as good as Rumpelstiltskin's. Like, oh fucketh me is still gonna be a classic. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. They actually day. removed all of the Scarecrow's lines, his one-liners. They actually removed all of them 
and only let him do certain of the lines where you hear him talking. It's more directed towards trying to get information out of people. The 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 comedy one liners the director removed, mm. so we don't get any of the what could be. Oh fuck with me. It would have been a better movie if they had let those in. I agree. Even then, like some of the kills, like they're gruesome, but not in a good way. Just kind of like, eh. I just remember not being very excited about this movie up until yeah. the sewing of the lips, and then yeah. and then it got much better. The uh, so I want to just skip to the death of the scarecrow because girl starts hitting the book and the scarecrow's like, ouch, that hurts book is destroyed or they they crush the scarecrow completely one of his seeds kind of goes and gets planted into the ground yep so they left it open for a sequel which no never happened nope will never happen you would think that it would be dark knight of the scarecrow which is the film that comes up all the time when i search for night of the scarecrow right yes they have nothing to do with each other but i'm told dark knight of the scarecrow is a much better film the Night of the Scarecrow. When did... Yeah, that was, like, made in the 1970s, 1980s. I, I looked it up as well. 81, Finding yeah. Night of the Scarecrow was hard enough, and that was an early aughts film, because there's the random CG that you can just kind of see there. It's a little out of place, but... Dude, I thought the 90s transformation of the Scarecrow was pretty cool. Yeah. The shitty CGI lightning bolt to him, and then the straw going into the Scarecrow body, and then filling out the body parts was kind of neat for a 90s film. Doesn't hold up today. What, was this the 90s? I thought it was the early 2000s. It was... Uh, it should be 95, yeah. Yeah, it was not not great. No. He, uh, the villain wasn't likable. The main characters weren't likable. The sheriff was a bumbling idiot. The mayor was just kind of, you know, standard dad. I thought Dylan was fine. He was kind of... He just had cut off sleeves, and so that's how he knew he was the bad boy in town. Yeah, I just felt like he was so forgettable in this movie. Like, he's not that strong of a character. They had that crappy love scene, or, or yeah, romantic scene in the bar. And that, um, I think I wrote a quote down. Yeah. Oh, and she goes, like, what are you looking for? And he goes, guess I'm looking for what everyone's looking for. Someone to be there in the morning. And I'm like, what? God, these are, this is like the most cheesy writing for a romance scene in the 90s. It's like, perfect. It's the 90s perfectly. And I'm going to leave you with this. That scarecrow scream at the end was probably my favorite point in this movie. Right. Because, A, it signified the film was done and I didn't have to suffer anymore. But, B, like, that scarecrow needs a better film. I think that scarecrow is terrifying. The design was good. And it could be a much better film. Right. Let's remake it. I don't disagree with you there. Uh, I feel like how the scarecrow died, he was, he was getting crushed. But he blew up. Makes no sense. You could tell they put a bunch of explosives inside him. And then they, uh, he's like walking towards this thing that's going to crush him. And then the guy presses the button and he just stands there for it to crush him. Which is kind of one of those horror movie faux pas. Things that make you know that this movie's not good. No. But... No. Uh, I, I, we could have had a much better ending. Um, yeah. Like in have. Children of the Corn. We could have had a much better beginning. We could have had a much better middle. We could have had a lot better uh, cast. We could have had a lot better writing. We could have had a lot better uh, one-liners. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm so glad that you don't hate me for this pick. That, uh, that makes me happy. That you don't hate me. It honestly felt like they were trying to make another Nightmare on Elm Street slash Friday the 13th slash uh, Magical Killer serial killer movie and that's what it was it was absolute garbage nobody watch it um one out of ten if if it's lucky enough to get a one out of ten i wouldn't even give it that high yeah a 0.5 out of ten bad movie all right but i tried to segue us into children of the corn <laughs> and clark had two more words he wanted to say about um night of the scarecrow so Here's our crappy segue to Children of the Corn. Clark, what'd you think? Uh, Have you seen this before? I've seen this movie several times. Okay. I've, I've read the Stephen King short story as well. Okay. Uh, the things I have not seen are the sequels, and uh, I don't know if I want to. I've kind of kept myself clean and pure, because I don't know how you could make a sequel to this film. You don't. They don't tie together. 
I, I mean, I can just tell you right now. So I've watched Children of the Corn all the way up to, I think, it's six. Um, and there's really no tie-in to this first film with these characters. Later on, yeah, you get some kind of hints or some feelings of, like, okay, the town gets reused or whatever. Um, but all in all, there really is nothing that ties these movies together. Um, and probably for the better, because Children of the Corn, to me, is the only Children of the Corn film that you should watch. Mm -hmm. If you're really hurting and you're wanting to put yourself through some pain, go ahead and watch the sequels. Um, they're just not as good. They don't hold up at all. Right. So, I, pretty standard. This is one of the iconic horror movies of the 1980s. The Linda, Hamil Linda Hamilton is just stellar in whatever role she plays. I'm going to stand by that. I she made the last couple seasons of Chuck watchable nice but a uh, great movie so I thought the children's drawings they, they always make me laugh because I know they're meant to be creepy and kind of weird but I always think like did a kid draw those or did like some adult on this company have to like draw those like a kid would and make them gory so it always makes me chuckle because that's a big part of the opening for this film um pretty memorable um but yeah, so so basically, quick synopsis: we've got two two folks who are traveling to um, Bert's. It's Bert and Vicky, Linda Hamilton and Peter Horton. Bert and Vicky, and they're heading to um, his residency in Nebraska. Right. And as they're driving through, they have to pass through these cornfields. Hence, why I picked this film for November. Lots of corn. Um, basically, on their way there, they end up running across a young man in the middle of the road. Um, he gets struck. No spoilers there. That's what really starts the movie for us. Um, then the rest of the film is basically them trying to figure out what is up with this town that they get lost in. Um, what is going on? Where are all the adults? What are these kids doing? What is anyone doing? Why are they still here? And movie. The first scene of the movie is narrated by one of the kids that they meet along the way who's not trying to kill them. And uh, I feel like from what you just said, it would have been a better movie, actually, if we heard the narration of that first or after these two people are traveling. Yeah. And then, you know. No, that's a good point. Yeah, because if you look at it, he sets up the movie. You know, you see the slaughterhouse in the, in the diner and all that. You get all of the juicy information that. Right at the start. That, yeah, that as a viewer, they give you all that info and then. You kind of watch Bert and Vicky go through it and try and figure it all out while you already know all the answers. It would have potentially been a little bit better of a cut doing that, but uh, that's personal opinion. I, I do think, I'd like to think about this movie as, so Vicky is really Sarah Connor, and she's running from the Terminator still. I was really hoping we weren't going to, <laughs> I was so hoping we weren't going to have a Terminator quote because it's on the list. Like, we're going to do Terminator. It's not a quote, I mean, it's, but she's no, on no, the I know, I know, I know. Um, a tie-in. I was, I was yeah. hoping. Because, um, I don't know, I think Terminator's a great horror film, and we'll get there eventually. But I like to think of her as Vicky, and only Vicky. <laughs> Vicky who can't dance, okay? That birthday serenade at the beginning of the movie was terrible. But she can sing. She, she can, can sing, sing, but she can't dance. Um, I'm okay with her dancing. <laughs> Look, man, this is between two people. The, it, it, she's supposed to be a bad dancer like if you're in a relationship and all of a sudden your your significant other pulls out like random perfectly choreographed dance moves yeah. just randomly singing some song you're probably in a dream Here, here's what I mean about a bad serenade if I'm alone <laughs> with my significant other in a hotel room and it's my birthday and she's singing to me um, and dancing mm -hmm. and those dance moves are supposed to appear sexy the clothes are probably coming off in this film, it's completely like PG. She's being goofy. She's being silly. She's being sure. a silly girlfriend. Sure. They're getting ready to go on a trip. They're having a good time. They may have, you know, sometimes just, it's not about sex, Curtis. It doesn't always have to be about sex. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But a lot of horror movies are. This is not one of them. Thank God. This is, a, well, they're trying, they're talking about building a family. They're talking about getting married. And the this is pretty standard. Uh, the guy's like, well, I don't want to have a family. And the woman's like, I want to have a family. And, you know, there's that build-up and that tra character transformation near the end. Or, or it's what you kind of feel is happening. But uh, 
no room for commitment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The main char- the main character Bert, I believe he is a doctor, if I remember correctly. He's doing a lot of doctoring in the whole movie. Yeah. They after they hit this this person in the road, like he checks his his wife. He's like, "You okay? You feel this? You feel this?" Then he checks the body, and it's like, "This person has been dead for before we hit them, but for some reason they were standing in the road." Um. Anyhow, they they continue driving through this this road and they meet the gas station attendant who tells them he doesn't have anything i don't have gas i don't have a phone i don't have this you want to go to this town so they're stuck on the same exact note what does this guy survive on he's got no gas no phone no restroom well he's obviously lying to them so they keep driving and they keep going into the town like they're stuck on an endless loop whatever it is here that that has to do with the corn and the children is not letting them leave. You missed a good quote, though. What's the good quote? Bert tells the gas station guys they're driving away. He goes, don't ever show up in my emergency room, buddy. And then right after that, I was like, don't worry. He never will. <laughs> nope. Uh, so, yeah. So, they, they're trying to get out of there. They're trying to find the, the town. Um, he tells them not to go to Gatlin. Right. Right? Or Gatlin. He says, don't go to Gatlin. Go to, you know... I don't even know what the other town's called. It's 18 miles away or whatever. So they're like, okay, well, we'll do that. But they keep... All the signs are pointing them to Gatlin. They're rerouting them. I think the corn is moving them, or the kids had already moved them, or whatever. Basically, it's routing these people to Gatlin. Um, and, and oh, man, does the movie pick up from there? Well, so, they, can't, they can't leave. They're already stuck on this infinite loop. So you have... You have the two characters, the two villains, and they're kind of at odds with each other. You have Isaac, who's the preacher, and there's a lot of kind of anti-religion spread sprinkled throughout this movie, which I'm okay with. But one of the things that this guy is kind of spreading is like, we got, we got to kill adults for this, for our god, Dagon. I believe it's Dagon or Dagon or... Dagon, I think, yeah. Dagon. And they're sacrificing. I don't, I don't know why they're sacrificing, but and he's kind of the the spiritual leader and then you have the muscle who is malachi who's kind of uh he's becoming a rogue and he's doing things on his own while you have kind of the head guy being the religious guy and then the muscle so your age-old story of the muscle kind of starting to think on his own going why do i need to take orders right what makes isaac so special that he's in charge and i'm not and isaac's reply always is you know i am the one who speaks or is spoken to by he who walks behind the rose. Mm. Uh, rose being rose of corn, not rose of pews. Uh, but still a very biblical type feel. Um, right. Very interesting, the blue man on the on the the cross. The police officer. The police officer. Yeah. I feel like that could be a movie slash story all on its own. Of that cop rolling up into town. You could probably turn a whole movie about that. Because that body's been there a long time if it's already bones. The fact that nobody's aged since uh, whatever's happened. Uh, it's it, also very... It's probably been a year or two. Not not longer than two years because those kids would have aged a lot more. Sure. But How many names were in the book? There were quite a few. It wasn't that many. Not though. that many, though. Not enough to, to justify, but I don't think... Not that, bones. That town had a lot of kids. Yeah, but not... I mean, not all of them are going to survive. You Some leave. of them are going to try to leave. They're going to get killed, just right. like poor uh, whatever his face was at the beginning. If you leave a body out as a scarecrow for about a year, it, it might look like that. I don't, I'm don't. i not a doctor. but Well, if you do know, write in. Tell us. Tweet at us. Let us know. <laughs> so here's just another point in the movie where we could have already ended. So instead of listening to Vicky, Bert decides, no, let's go into the abandoned house. Instead of going to Haddonfield or whatever that other town's called, he's like, let's head in here. And that's where that starts him getting stuck again. Because now the car's going to get wrecked. All that's going to happen. Right. Um, Very disappointed in Bert. For being such a smart man, a doctor, he doesn't really make good decisions. He's stubborn. Yeah. uh, He's very preachy. He's very... uh, You know, he's that kind of preachy, smart guy who just knows what's right. And he's going to tell you how he knows what's right. Yeah, I agree. So my wife's watching... So we're on the flight to Minnesota when I'm watching this. And my wife's sitting next to me and she's watching it but not listening. 
I have my headphones on. I'm watching very intensively. She's just kind of leaning over and watching, but not listening. Got to get a splitter. And no, she doesn't want to listen. She doesn't. Oh, okay. That's not. Yeah, if she's gonna watch a horror movie. She doesn't want to hear it. Um, but she she taps me and she goes, "Why why did Vicky stay with the girl inside the house instead of going with Bert? Why didn't she go with Bert?" And I go, "Babe, because Bert's a dumbass." Who decided he's going to go into town and keep looking for people instead of taking the girl and getting out of there? <laughs> like once again, Bert being stubborn. So they couldn't get out of the town. Remember, they were stuck on that infinite loop. So what would they have done? Just drive, just drive through the cornfield out. They couldn't have. I know. That's what the movie tells us. Yeah, that was kind of the the. They're stuck. They can't stop getting out of this loop. I. Uh, fortunately, you know uh, he. Bert makes some bad decisions. The kid, he's like, kid, go back in the house. Stop following me. And he ends up needing the kid's help to actually get the pipes working yeah. with an ungodly amount of gasoline that comes out of nowhere uh, to, spoilers, burn the fields so they yeah. can actually get I said, out of the town. Kid, the kid's totally saving Bert's ass, and Bert's just like yelling at him like, no, get out of here. Go be safe or whatever. And it's like, if that kid hadn't have been there, Bert, you're dead. You're a you're blue man. All over again. Listen to the kid. He's been here a while. Yeah. Um, oh, man. When he meets Isaac for the first time, and he, Isaac's spouting off the... Or no. They're in the church. He Yeah, he comes across the sacrifice of the 19-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. And he goes, are you, are you rewriting the whole thing or just the parts that suit you? Doesn't that go for, like, every other religion out there? <laughs> like Pretty much. I feel like that was part of the... Social that was kind of commentary. the message the uh, the movie was kind of giving out. Like the very beginning, you hear the preacher, like preaching, like yeah. about there's being no room for the gays, no room for blah blah blah. Yep. And then the Bert goes, "No room for the college educated." Kind of turns off the radio from there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Why I have this written down. Don't be a scaredy cat. There's a quote from somewhere in this, and I thought that was funny when I was in there. CGI. Was that? I don't... Is that what it was? Was it CGI? Are you talking about the... I don't think they had CGI back then. This is you a think it was like overlay? The, well, the, the kind of red smoke. The uh, Well, the lightning, like when Isaac gets hit and all that, and the clouds roll in, and then there's like fire. I think they had effects like this that they weren't CGI, though. They weren't CGI yet? I don't think so. I mean, um, for for it, it's it's pretty terrible <laughs> looking at it now for yeah. for what they were doing. I'm sure back then it was pretty eye opening and jaw dropping, but today's day and age, it just doesn't it doesn't feel the same. It definitely adds more of a cheesy effect. I feel that it works better not showing Dagon than if they did. Yeah. So I feel it was fine, but Malachi or Isaac kind of coming back from Malachi, Dagon wants you too, Malachi. Yeah. That was. That was goofy, but otherwise... I, I mean, goofy, but... Terrifying. I mean, I can see in 1985, and that would be terrifying. It'd be pretty it's, creepy. It's a bit scary, like... But you could tell they just kind of put I'm a bunch partial. of spray, hairspray color to yeah. make his hair white. And, Makeup. Yeah. I, I'm pretty partial to Demonic Isaac, though. I think he's a very cool villain, um, because he was already a villain, but now he's like boss tier two villain, which kind of is neat. He just picks up... Well, he got his revenge on Malachi, and he yes. did a good job. Well, Dagon was displeased with Malachi, and he told him, and Malachi yeah. turned on Dagon's servant. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, Isaac was the chosen one. He wasn't bullshitting. Well, had they followed Isaac's advice, maybe things would have t- turned out differently. Yeah. Bert but, and Vicky might not have done whatever they... <laughs> we're, we've already spoiled a good part, but... It doesn't even matter. Like, this no. movie's... Outlander! It's, this movie's oh, just man, worth watching. That was good. <sighs> so, Outlander! So when, when Bert shows up and saves Vicky from Sorry. getting crucified or whatever, um, Nicole was watching still, and she goes, when did she get all this energy to run away? Because she was so tired, and she could barely stand after he had like rescued her with all that the Malachi and all the guys around them. Right. And then all of a sudden, Vicky like, gets up and runs to the barn. Like, full right. sprint. Doesn't, doesn't miss a beat. Perfectly fine. Um, and then my last piece that I love about, or loved about this movie that I thought was really funny is um, when they're in the barn and they're getting the pipe ready and Bert goes, hey, Vicky, get me a rag. And then 
Vicky turns to Job, the narrator of the, mm-hmm. the movie, grabs his shirt and like rips a piece off the shirt, and the little and Job goes, "That's not a rag!" Like so angry that she grabbed him and tore his shirt. That I don't know. I just started laughing really hard on the plane, and the guy next to me was like looking over to find out what the hell I was laughing at, and I was just like, "That's not a shirt, or that's not a rag." <laughs> So I I like this now. movie. I thought it was fun. Um, would you recommend it to other people? Uh, so maybe when I was younger, but uh, I feel this movie's worth watching to kind of get a decision for yourself. I don't. It's it, it's not for me. Okay. It's not for me. I would I would chalk it up there as like this is one of those classic horror type films that you you've definitely heard of if you if you follow horror films in general you've heard of it and you should probably watch it and give it a kind of a test for yourself and see if you if it's your thing i would uh i, I agree with you there i i feel like the, this movie is is scary the concept of it is is terrifying it has not it has not aged as well as it could have linda hamilton did fantastic uh peter horton did great as bert uh the kids the ch- are a little... the child acting there were really good spots I mm-hmm. feel like Job did a good job his sister didn't have a lot of lines but I think she did a pretty good job um, I think Isaac overacted way too hard um, even though I liked him I think he could have been much better and then Malachi I don't I don't know if I had to like grade Malachi I don't think he was a great actor but I don't think he was bad either he was great because he was a dumb ginger. Yeah, and he really fulfilled that role very well. I feel like Sarah, uh, the the little girl, she did she did they did a good job. Like the Monopoly scene, where like you put Malachi and Isaac in prison, and Malachi's like throws a knife right next to him. It's like, yeah, I I'd watch it. I'd say just watch it. Watch it. Tweet at us. Give us give us your feedback. So tweet us at Two Guys Horror Pod. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at the same at two guys horror pod, the number two, not the word two. Um, you know what? And send us some emails, send us some suggestions, uh, two guys horror podcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to really say or promote right now, but thanks for listening. Yeah. I uh, just, uh, if there's somebody in your car, by the way, and you accidentally close the door and hit their head and they pass out, call a doctor. Is it horror? Can we tie this into the podcast somehow? It's not a horror movie. It's a a comedy. All right, we'll figure out a way to work it in.